Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Terrily Wild, and today is a little bit different. Y'all going to go down a walk down memory lane with me, take me back to my time in China. So this is a new series, episode, whatever you want to call it, new series I guess I'm trying to do, and it's going to be called um, Turley Tales, where I give you some information and tell some stories about my experience in China while I was living there and working there. And the first episode, or this first little series, is going to be about Geo Amata Spangara. How did I get involved with Gio Amata Spangarai? Because I did not go to China to work with Gio Amata Spangarai. As a matter of fact, it was the last thing on my list. There was another species that I was more interested in working with, but this is the beginning of how I got heavily involved with Gio Amata Spangarai and why I'm still involved with them today. All right, I hope you enjoy and give me the feedback on what you think. So this took me to my postdoc. We moved to China and then we went to Hainan Island because that's where the turtles are in China. So that's what we did first. We moved to Hainan. This is the view from our apartment. Beautiful place, a little town called Ushu. And you can look out over all the beautiful mountains and it looks like it's lush green forest. However, when you get up close to what you are looking at in that view, it is not. <laughs> it's tree farms. It's betel nut and rubber trees for the most part. Um, betel nut trees or bing lan is just a recreation recreationally used drug really it, it's, a, it's a stimulant and a lot of people use it um, they even have dried betel nut fresh betel nut but it's a very good crop for local people and it helps with the income now rubber trees have been there for decades it was a way to get um, money to the local people however because of that <laughs> Lots of the forests were torn down, and most of it is beetle nuts and rubber trees. There's not a lot of natural forest left. And because of that, turtles are in decline. Now, they harvest it like you see there. They cut it. They good job. They cut it, and the sap comes out. It makes this nice, pretty, looks like white cheese sauce, Mexican cheese or whatever. But anyways, they put it in vats like this to sell it and collect it, and they move on. Another big issue in Hainan, of course, is collection for the pet trade. So you have deforestation for crops, beetle nuts, uh, regular crops, beetle nuts, and rubber trees. And then you've got collection for pet trade, like this Galbenefrons here. Um, in addition to collection for pet trade, we also have, of course, everybody knows that, collection for the food. Now, honestly, most of these, there's some Ambo and shells in there, but most of those are captive raised animals from farms. The Ambulonensis are, but most of those are captive raised now. Uh, very few animals uh, locally are collected for food. Most of it's for the pet trade. And so what did I do most of the time? I was in villages looking around for these turtles, trying to find out where turtles are. There was a mohatei in that, and it lost a leg, so they weren't going to eat it, so they were gonna, or they weren't, couldn't sell it, so they were going to eat it. So anyways, TSA comes up. I meet Jeff Dawson. You can see him there, and he starts asking me about Spangler Eye, and I start getting interested. So long story short, me and Jeff travel around eating some good food like this rice bowl and haiko and having a lot of adventures riding our scooters around for field work that was our field vehicle scooters and we also had some not so great food. Well, actually this is interesting food it was actually pretty good so it's a uh, ground wasp and then bee larvae that were fried and stir fried it was actually pretty tasty so enough about our food and stuff you came here to learn about spangler eye so talk to jeff I'm like, all right, I know a guy. I'll talk to him, see if he has any information on these things. God, I've been there almost a year and hadn't seen one, so I wasn't really interested. But I started asking around, and boom. We come to this village. My friend says, hey, this place has collected them. This year, they started collecting them for some reason, so we went to check it out. And sure enough, first day, we found some uh, villagers that had this animal. And this picture really got me started on this. There's a little itty-bitty male hind on Spangler Eye, and he's got this bigger-than-life attitude like I'm gonna get you don't mess with me I'm gonna get you but unfortunately he's just a little spangler on you can pick him up and he can't really hurt you but this is kind of where I got the idea that fighting for survival because they are uh, there's a lot of threats to them deforestation um, over collection not so much for high nine populations until about 2015 and you can see that same trip we saw over a hundred uh, spangler about 150 spangler on that first trip into the mountains uh, to this village. And 2015 was the first year they really became um, in demand. Prior to that, it was like 10 cents or 10 kwai, which is about 50, 60 cents US. 
And they're given as gag gifts. They say, hey, my friend's getting having a birthday. If I find one, I'll give it to him as a gag gift. Because you couldn't eat them. They're too small. Well, actually, they could eat them. They say they're very sweet. But nobody cared about it. They're so small. It's not worth it. And they didn't have any price, right? Ten quai. No one's going to go up and look for them for that price. But 2015, demand hit. Price went from ten quai to about 100 to 150. And so that's where this story begins. Now we find them. We know where they are. What have we done from then? Because we have this big issue, right? Like this fork in this um, rice field. Which way do we go? We can go left. Maybe that goes to extinction of the, these populations in Hainan. Or we can go right and start to protect them and try to find ways to conserve them for future generations. I hope you enjoyed episode one. Um, there's gonna, I don't know how many I'm going to make. I'm just going to go along kind of in progress of what we did. But I hope you enjoyed episode one and... Uh, trying to get new to this format of doing this video this way, so hopefully it will get better. Uh, thank you for watching and your support, and until next time for episode two, y'all have a good one.